Yeah, I mean, everybody looks at inflation and says, oh my God, this is horrible. The cost of everything is going up. And, you know, the one maybe silver lining, as you've accurately said, or bright spot, or however you want to look at it, is that every year, Social Security looks at inflation relative to the last time they gave a annual increase. And if the inflation rate is higher than that comparison period, it will actually bump up the amount that it pays people who are receiving social security checks every month. So the silver lining of rising inflation is the potential for you know the 60 million or whatever, however many uh, retirees out there, retired workers are that are out there, the silver lining may be that they're going to get more money in their monthly paycheck uh, next year, Joe. And that's, I mean, that would be huge when you think about last year's increase uh, for, for this year. So they, they make this decision in October, Joe, every year, and they base it on the third quarter uh, inflation rate, the CPIW, relative to the, to the third quarter of the last year in which they did the, the coal increase. So since they increased it for 2021 last October, they'll be comparing this third quarter number to last year's third quarter number. In June, Joe, CPIW was up 6.1%, 6 which is scary, right? On the Because you look at that and you say, that is crazy, crazy uh, explosive uh, inflation. And especially when you think that that realized that the, the CPIW was up 5.5% in the quarter overall. So it's an acceleration. It was higher in May than it was in April. CPIW was higher in June than it was in May. And the June number is higher than the three quarter average. So if, if, if these numbers match the June numbers throughout July, August, and September, that 6.1% read in June, that would mean that Social Security recipients could get a 6.1% bump up in their Social Security checks beginning in January. And Joe, the average, you know, retirees, you know, got getting about 1,550 bucks per month. So, I mean, this, the, the you know, every little 6% is a lot. That <laughs> is know, a lot. There's a lot of people uh, out there who will be cheering that news on one side and then of course hoping that inflation falls <laughs> sharply next year so that actually their that their buying power is is better right exactly yeah yeah from the from the perspective of of the of you know the two of us are fairly far off from receiving social security i would say i am extremely far off uh, but yeah, 6.1% inflation is definitely concerning as somebody myself who is about to enter the workforce. So certainly, certainly something, uh, something to watch and, uh, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on that potential cost of living adjustment as people always say, COLA, uh, anything, anything else you want to touch on regarding social security, Todd? Uh, no, I mean, Social Security is, is designed to replace about 40% of the average retired worker's pre-retirement income. And it's a pretty complex calculation that Social Security does to figure out exactly how much you're going to get in monthly benefits, which would be a great topic for an upcoming show. Listeners, if you'd like us to dive into that, happy to do it. Just drop a note in the comments um, and, and let us know. And, and we'll, we'll explain that and maybe offer some, some tips and tricks to try and boost your social security income. Yeah, those COLA increases are important. I, I think the one thing that I would also add on, the, on that COLA um, topic is that we have to remember that they base the COLA on CPIW and CPIW is the inflation for the average worker, right? The W is for workers. These are retirees. So the right. expenses that a retiree has are not necessarily the same expenses that a worker has. For example, they spend way more on healthcare than does say the average person of working age. So there's a big argument out there, Joe, that for decades, this whole tying the COLA to CPIW is a huge mistake because it doesn't accurately re reflect the inflation that seniors may be facing. And, and you know, there's been studies out there that have shown that the buying power of a senior is actually 30% less than it was 20 years ago, 30% less. I mean, that's, that's obviously 
not good, <laughs> if you're, especially if you're on a fixed income in retirement. So I think these COLA increases are very, very, very important to many, many Americans, should provide a little bit more, hopefully, discretionary income for retirees. And, and let's hope that, um, you know, we do see some normalizing of inflation in 2022 so that the buying power, you know, is evident because of the COLA.